do want to go now to Heather Catalo. She is live downtown. She is covering Hanson Clark's campaign. And Heather, so is the room filling up a little bit behind you since the last time we talked? A lot. We're actually facing a different direction now because we're going to be speaking with State Senator Hanson Clark. This room is packed right now. He has a ton of supporters here. How confident are you feeling right now? I feel great, but this race is more than about me and the incumbent. It's about whether the taxpayers are going to have control over their money, and that's why I've been fighting to put power back in the hands of the people because it's the taxpayers that should run the show, not any single politician. There's been a lot of discussion in this race about the problems in the Kilpatrick family. You've been telling me that's not been your focus. What has your focus been? About the other families right now who are losing their jobs, their home values, and their hope in government and in, their, in themselves. I want to make sure that the member of Congress out of this district is a strong advocate for all the taxpayers, especially for people who don't have political connections. That's most of the viewers right now. And there are many people who don't feel that their government, especially their Congress, is there to serve them, especially in their time of great need. Many people in this region are suffering in an economic depression. They need the strongest possible advocate. That's what they're going to get when they hire me as their congressman tonight. And what have you done to get that message out to the voters? I understand you have been out literally just going door to door, talking to folks. What have you been doing to get that message out? You know, recently I've been work campaigning around the clock. I campaigned 24 hours throughout midnight and early in the morning. But most importantly, the last 14 years I've served in the legislature, I've done so to help people directly with their problems, to help them avoid foreclosure, avoid utility shutoff help keep schools open to better educate our young people and make our streets safer. You see, what I found out being an elected official, you don't have to sit on a committee, appropriate money, or pass legislation to help people. You need to be their advocate and work for them. And if they have problems, serve them directly. That's what Congress hasn't been doing. They've been using our tax dollars to bail out banks that foreclose on our neighbors. They've been using our tax dollars to bail out insurance companies who overcharge uh, the drivers with the best driving records here in Metro Detroit. That's not right. People need their tax dollars returned back to them in terms of saving their property values, training people for jobs that are right here in Michigan. Uh, but. We have a high demand for it, but we don't have enough people qualified and trained. That's why I went in the middle of my campaign last Monday to Washington, D.C. I met with the Assistant Secretary of Labor, and I said, look, we need some jobs right away. We know there are jobs right here in Detroit. We have to hire all these nurses from Canada. I want Detroiters and Metro Detroiters trained for those jobs. So he agreed. They said they're putting together some money that could be available as early as January when I take office as the congressman in the 13th district. So this week I'm going to follow back up with the uh, officials in the U.S. Department of Labor to make sure we get that training money ready right now as soon as possible. We have to put people back to work immediately. This is what the public wants. They want someone to represent them not a political agenda, not a personal agenda, not the lobbyists for the financial industry. They get heard, but the people right now, and if I could just give you an example, there are many people right now whose voices are not heard, such as the laid-off auto executive who's now in foreclosure, such as the single mom who always struggles even when others prosper, such as the military veteran who has to get their meals out of garbage dumpsters or anyone else right now who's in need but don't feel that their government or Congress has been serving them, your voice is going to be heard tonight when you elect me as your congressman. You've talked a lot about this trip to Washington. That trip, unfortunately, was uh, sort of derailed your ability to get into that debate. Do you think that's going to hurt you at all? No, not at all. And, you know, I don't care about talking to other politicians. This is the problem. Political candidates and politicians, all they want to do is talk. People need action right now. These are desperate times in this region. People are out of work. They're losing their homes. They're losing hope. My, the whole reason why I'm running for Congress is to help get people out of this economic recession and restore financial stability to this region. So I decided in the middle of the campaign to meet with the officials of the U.S. Department of Labor because that's what my job is. It's to provide job training, jobs, employment, income, and hope to people in this region who pay taxes all of their lives. They deserve to get some of their money back to them directly. And that's what I'm going to do as their congressman. Do you want to introduce this lovely lady? Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> this is our campaign treasurer who really 
has a lot of leverage over me. This is uh, my wife and my partner, Troy Palms Cohen. Nice to meet you, Troy. And what are your thoughts tonight? How confident are you? I'm very excited for Hanson, and I think that the people's choice will be the right choice. And very confident that he's going to win the race. And, and Senator Clark, you have a very um, interesting life story. You grew up on the east side. You've shared a little bit of that with us. You were here with your aunt earlier who helped raise you. Right. Tell us how, how hard it's been for you, where you've come from, and, and where, you, where you're going with this. You know, I learned hard lessons in my life. Uh, I didn't have parents after the age of 19. I never had brothers and sisters. I lost my college scholarship soon after that, then my income, and then my food stamps. But here's why that turned out to be an extraordinary experience for me, and it makes me a better congressman. Because it was through God's graces and through an act of Congress I was able to get a job. It was the old CETA program. I was able to get this job. It paid me a little bit more than the minimum wage. Not that much money, but you know what it did? It restored my dignity because I was going to work every day. They assigned me to Kettering High School to the attendance office. I was in my early 20s. I was a deadbeat. I didn't have a job. I had you know, lost my scholarship and everything else, but I had to work and mentor high school students. That really increased my self-esteem, and it gave me a sense of mission to go back to college, and I could see that I could do something to help young kids in the neighborhood. That's been my mission ever since. So I know that as a member of Congress, I can help people who are in need. Because I experience what they're going through. I don't want them to give up on hope like I almost did. That's why this is so important. That's why I'm willing to risk any, anything politically to help people right now. Running against an incumbent, that was no big deal. I needed to defeat this political system once and for all. Because to me, this culture that's been in Detroit politics has not served our people. Many times elected officials have run for office just to serve themselves or their family members when their real job is to serve the public. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put power back in the hands of the people again uh, as their congressman. Thank you so much for joining You're us welcome. live. I appreciate it. We'll be uh, touching base with you throughout the night. Absolutely. And we're going to throw it back to you guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> back to you, Christy. All right.